Hello, I'm Teacher Kirby and this is our first ever recording of Utopia Planitia. So this is going to be a build show. Joining me, our regular cast, is Ed's Evil Twin. Say hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. <laughs> See, he follows directions well, doesn't he? And Ain. Say hello. Hi, I'm Ain. <laughs> Ain says hi. Ain says hi. Ain often talks in the third person. We haven't figured out why yet. And normally Ain Timber, yes, normally Timber would be joining us, but Timber is late to the party. But while we were waiting, we managed to dig up Timber's baby picture. Oh, isn't it cute? Oh, <laughs> oh. you just want to pat him on the head. I know, right? And, and then well, we you know, have. I, I, I tried. I, you I tried, tried to pick and... him up for the kennel today, but you know, the vets were just like, you know, Timber has to clean up his mess first. It's, it's yep. going to take a while, so he'll be back tomorrow. Okay. Maybe he'll be back tonight. We'll see. But in the meantime, we Maybe. have cuteness overload with the puppy picture. Okay. And then we have our our guinea pig. I mean, our our. Our friend here tonight, my husband. First and, victim. And yes, our first victim. And no, he didn't use his his contacts to be the first one on the show. <laughs> but our first well, victim, I mean cleanup. volunteer. Yeah, it was. Um, Poena. Say hi, Po. Hi, Po. <laughs> See, he follows directions well, too. Okay, so Poe has graciously given us a skill planner for one of his tunes, and he told me beforehand he wants to do a temporal build for this tune. So we have the skill planner here, and if we look, it's a Federation captain and engineer. And let's start with the starship, so you guys can pull it up as well. All right, so first thing I want to ask, Poe, what are your goals for this ship? What do you have, your ideal big picture? What do you want to do? Uh, I was planning on keeping it temporal. That's about as far as I got. Okay. Oh, and beams. Okay. So you want to use temporal ability and beams to do DPS, right? Yeah. Okay, so we a have a little survivability in there. Okay, so we have a pretty broad brush, guys. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Ed? Ed, go first. <sighs> All right. When when you, I, I'm I'm looking at the build, and I'm and the first thing that I'm I'm drawn to is the science consoles. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, I've already had a look at the character skills page as well, so I've seen what sort of science and abilities um, Poe's using on his on his build. Poe, is there any reason why you haven't gone for the, let's say, the embassy consoles that will be boosting your EPG? Because that in itself would also help with some of the temporal stuff, especially if you're using some of the damage over time abilities and some of those other bits and pieces. Part of it is because, like, especially when I was trying to get up through the whole story arc and everything, the uh, the three piece set that I've got stuck there in science gave a hell of a lot more for survivability. So is survivability an issue for you with the build? It was when I was trying to level up quick. Understandable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because one of the things yeah. that I'm drawn to is is is, is that um, chrono tachyon capacitor. I mean, yes, it is a, it is a nice console, um, but I I I I I think you could probably, I mean, go for maybe one of the plasma generating consoles in there. To be honest, um, I'd give up the causal anchor and the chrono tachyon capacitor. However, the tactical system stabilizer, I wouldn't give it up because it, um, uh, because of the just how much it uh, helps cool down my tactical abilities. 
Because right now I actually have them in global. As soon as I fire them, they're, they're already at global. I don't need a second copy. Okay. So I'm going to put in two science consoles then. But equally with that, you could you could also possibly go for the research labs uh, restorative consoles that give you the chance of doing the boosted damage. Um, in in certain scenarios, they do perform just as well as the plasma consoles with the you know the difference of the plasma damage made up by the the boost of the actual restorative. And that way, then you can you can boost if you are finding you're lacking maybe in control or drain or something else. You can you can run the two together. True. Yeah, because um, what what was the bridge officer skills as well? Because we can work on those. We can see where we can. You know, what console loadout would be more appropriate for the actual skills? Okay, so for now. I've put in two um, plasma jetting row open signature nullifiers with EPG as their uh, their base. So that would boost your particle gens and help those temporal abilities have a little more kick. Oh, um, on the starship traits, there's, I mean, on the, the personal space traits, there's one skill the trainer does not have, and I have it on my, on my team right now. And that is the advanced rapid support. So if you look at the trainer, you'll notice there's an empty slot. And that's because I couldn't find the uh, that thing in the skill trainer. So I left it empty. And then I just like, oh, why you got that empty? Well, this is why. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure yeah. they'll, they'll update the skills trainer soon with loads of the new skills. It's just it's uh, some of them are quite new. And, yeah, they uh, are. I, th I think the guys that do this site are still voluntary, aren't they? Yes, they they definitely are. They don't uh, get paid for this. All right. So, what were you looking at, Ed? The bridge officers or the? Uh... Yeah. Or the um, okay. I I I know we had discussions prior to uh, mm -hmm. starting when we actually looked at the build to start with, um, and I remember you saying with the gravity well, possibly a DRB in a there. A DRB instead, right? Yeah, um, which means that, as I, as I was saying with the consoles... What is DRB in English? Destabilizing <laughs> resonance beam. Lens flare at will. Yes, you yeah. get it from <laughs> running the episode Blood of the Ancients. If you've already run that episode on this tune, then you can craft it. Right, so at the Lieutenant Commander slot, which this would be, that would be the DRB2 would go in that slot. You might want to edit that bit. Um, There's a reason that I have gravity free. well. Is it? No. It's not. I just yeah. did it today. Oh, no. If you're replacing gravity well. Gravel one. There's a reason that I have the gravity well is because it works well with two of my temporal abilities, which is uh, causal reversion and gravimetric conversion. Basically, I throw out the gravity well in a group, get them together, and then I hit... Um, um, evasive maneuvers and dive right through the group and then as I get in real close I hit the causal reversion and the gravimetric conversion and basically I drain their shields and drain their health and heal myself up at the same time. That is a good tactic. That is that actually. Is. So we're thinking keep the gravity well then? Also let's not forget control amplification in yeah. the skills tree. Yeah. Use of gravel with that. Very true. Very true. Okay, so we can keep the gravel then, and we did want to talk about the tactical though. Yes. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> we didn't get yelled at. Jeez. It's it's, it's it's adjusted. So we're gonna readjust this here, um, just for maximum efficiency. There's really no need to have anything over. Attack team one. And we're talking about you get a slight drop in the um in the debuff from beta one, 
but the damage that you gain from going up to fire at will 3 more than uh, makes up for it. So Agreed. when we talked about it, yeah. So when we talked about it, we, Ed and I discuss it, but yeah, but that, uh, so that should be Tac Team 1, Beta 1, and Fire at Will 3 for the tactical skills. Okay. I do like the, uh, the engineering, the temporal skills for the commander. Awesome. Recursive Shearing 3. Great. You've got the good defensive trait, the reverse shield polarity, entropic redistribution, nice. Channel deconstruction, I don't know, how have you been liking that? I haven't gotten a lot of good results from that. Well, you also got to remember, I'm running the, um, I'm running the mining beam, and I'm also running the, uh, because I'm running a temple ship, I have that, um, that, that other, their little molecular beam, deconstruction the molecular beam. deconstruction beam uh, set on there and I have all three of them side by side so I can just hit hot key one two three and I can just fire them all three at the same time so especially if I have a tough target I can hit it with three beams all at once okay I okay. don't the the jury's out on that one though I mean I could I, I would be willing to give it up for something else but okay. um I'm not sure if I like the other temporal abilities that are at this level <laughs> Yeah, but then you also have the option, as you said, you were having problems with survivability. That's a good to drop in an engineering team. Yeah. You know, for a, a, a little bit of an instant hull hill. Uh, that yeah. that would then possibly enable you to free up one of the other slots that you're using, maybe for, you know, that will give you the second, as you say, you have two copies of engineering team there. So you, you can then balance it out with your with your consoles. Mm -hmm. You Another, might want yeah. to free up some more DPS there. Yeah. The one thing I was noticing is, okay, you have... I understand the want for reverse shield polarity too, you know, the extra survivability, but you, you look at it and you look at all the four STFs, you never have shields anyway, because they're taking away faster than you're getting them back from reverse shield polarity. But so you got to remember on that, I have the reverse shield polarity, I also have gravimetric, I mean, uh, gravimetric conversion, and I have the science team, and I actually can keep my shields up against the board. I am very surprised. Because I, I, matter of fact, I did it today. I was running a uh, Borg um, red alert by myself. I mean, there was another person in there, but he waited until the the cigar ship popped up before he decided to do anything. Because I mean, even when I run, when I run my my scimitar with the Valdor console and reverse shield polarity, even I have issues keeping my shields up. Yeah, but then I'm the, 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 I, I can see. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, I, I, I can see points of view here, um, because I, I like, I mean, I've, I've run with the Valdor console, and I, I ran with Kirby last night, and I, I tanked most of the threat in a fate with zero deaths, and a Valdor console. 1.4 million <laughs> healing, uh, only took sure. 400k damage, and those shields were up instantly. And for those of you um, that... got down to 1% at one point. So for those that aren't familiar with it, the gravimetric conversion that Poe has at his lieutenant slot uh, sends out a burst of the burst, burst of gravimetric distortion that will simultaneously drain the shields of nearby foes while restoring your own. The amount of restoration itself is increased by hitting more targets, so it pairs very well with fire at will. The foes and foes afflicted with entropy will further increase both your shield restoration and the drain of their own shields. And so then it gives some, some numbers, which of course will be changed and affected based on various things. And I'm in sector space right now, so those aren't going to be true either. And it does remove entropy from affected foes. So that's what he's talking about with his shields being up. It's being drained, his foes are being drained by uh, fire at will. Everything he's hitting has given him a bit of shield. Yep. Yep. I can, I can see that actually working really well, in the, especially yep. against the Borg. Yep, I can see that. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's have a, so, 
if we move back to those consoles then. Yes. So I think the EPG is a really good choice for those consoles, the the plasma ones. Plasma generator. Yeah, and, one. and also if if he is trying to attract more energies uh, enemies into the actual gravity wall, we do know that there is that hard cap on on the um control. Yes. Um yes. but if he's still got a decent amount of skill in there. Um, he'll be able to pull from the extended distance, maybe, maybe if he can get as close as he can to the max. Mm -hmm. Very true. I mean, that will yeah, then boost the effect of the uh, gravimetric conversion as well, with more with more enemies in range for him to go through. Right. We'll have yes. to see a video of that, Boo. <laughs> um, now, the, uh, now I, I'm looking at stuff. There's a lot of stuff on this ship that I have got, I'm not attached to at all. Well, obviously your consoles are going to become the vulnerability locators for anti-proton, correct? And that chroniton drive actuator, I'm the I I don't know if I like it or not. I have heard mixed reviews about it. Yeah, so have I. I, don't yeah. have it, I can't see anything. Yeah, I think we've all been talking to the same people. <laughs> 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 I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, I, I look looking looking at, at, the, at your tech consoles anyway. It looks like um, I mean, you, you've only got the normal anti-proton mags in there. Is is it just a a waiting game for you to actually get the uh, fleet consoles? Yeah, I'm waiting until I can actually get credit. It's a pain in the butt because every time I go to try and dump, like, I got like, thousands of fleet credits on this tin. I can't dump them into any projects because they're never open. So. Until I can get um, fleet credits, and um, I mean, I got a whole bunch of fleet marks, but I, I don't. I have fleet credits that I can't. I can't get, so I can't get any of the good stuff. That's another reason why there's none of the good science consoles, is because, and that's why I went with this, is because I already had these uh, consoles from the ship, so I was like, okay. Okay. Yeah, that unfortunately is a problem yeah. that, that most people in fleets do have, especially the larger fleets. It's getting your resources in ahead of everyone else. Yes. I think we all, we all know that one. To be honest, it's almost worth it to go and start my own fleet. Yeah, it is, almost. Um, one trick that, you know, with the Admiralty, we've been getting a lot of colonists and prisoners of, as rewards for the Admiralty system. So one thing that fleet leaders can do to help give an alternative way to donate some things is every once in a while run the um, colonization, the special mission in the bottom. Let me pull it up since I've got the game up. Oh, where is it? Okay. So if I pull up the fleet and holdings, and it goes right here in the special, and it is, and coordinate colonization efforts. If you'll notice, it has as one of its thing requires 64 civilian duty officers. That does accept the prisoners and the colonists that come out of the Admiralty system. So it's a nice little yes, way you. you can, yes, you can get rid of them. You earn fleet credits for them. So that's a nice way to help bolster your um, your fleet credits without necessarily having to fight over. Anymore? Yeah, without having to fight okay, over gotcha. fleet marks. I, I I sold like twenty four prisoners this morning. The other good thing about <laughs> donating officers to fleet, it's it's one of the ones that people tend to leave behind because it they they, they think they're going to be expensive from the exchange. Um, but if you've got a couple of fleet credit, uh, yeah, fleet credit spare, you can you can pick them up. I mean, it defeats the object if you're trying to get fleet credits and buying your officers. Um, mm -hmm. But they do give you a much better reward than your fleet marks. Fleet marks 50 to 1. Officers vary between 250 and 300 to 1. Yeah. So it is in your. It is worthwhile sometimes sitting out the EC and buying the officers if you do need the fleet credit. If you have the EC. And it's one, it's them, one yeah. thing that fleets are always crying out for. Yes, it definitely is. That and dilithium. All right. So oh, the. Yeah. I have gone through. I have gone through <laughs> yep. millions in EC trying to buy those things for my fleet. Oh, I know. But yeah, that 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 one. Once you get those, that'll be a major improvement um, because you'll 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 end up. I mean, you you're obviously going to go for locators. Yeah. Go for locators yeah, so and get I, them I up mean, to that... fourteen epic. Yeah. All right.
that that, and, that then will increase the the crit so yes it will good numbers from them and then i notice you have the mining laser that does pretty well with particle gens as well so nice mm -hmm. little supporting choice there all right now Ayn, you were mentioning something that you noticed in the four weapons yes why is it you are running the if it'll pull up the name the temporal very defense. rare dual temporal defense chronoton beam thing. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. The okay, the temporal defense chronoton dual beam bank, along with the temporal defense chronoton beam array. It is. It's the as far as I've been able to see, it's the same weapon, just a different flavor. One is the ad, one of the advanced one is from the reputation the uh dual the dual beam one is out of the lockbox that comes from doing okay. the project then they just have to send it the advanced in okay that's why that's why i was sitting here looking okay. like it's right. the same weapon why is it no one of the the the, the beam <laughs> yeah. the uh, the array is from the prod from the reputation and then the other one is just something i got out of one of those lockboxes from doing the uh the uh, projects trying to get up to, low, to tier five but um okay yeah, um, and I just threw it on because it was better than what was already on there. And it okay. is important to so know. I'm assuming you're going to go try and get like crit D3 pin or damage 3 pin anti proton to replace it. Eventually. I'm not attached. I'm not attached pretty much any of these weapons. I mean, they're they're what they're those are the most of the uh, the regular uh, anti proton arrays are what my wife gave me as a uh, here something to help you start your character with when I was starting the Templeton. I think they're just, they were, are they crit H times 2 or crit D times 2? Oh, there's I a mix there. Um, yeah, he's got a mix. Yeah. yeah, it's like the uh, gold um, anti-proton beam array. It went gold at mark 11. So nice. I'm just, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to hang on to it for a while. I have no, re no need for thrust. Oh, that's right. I had crafted a bunch of. I had crafted a bunch of things, and you just said, "I'll take whatever you don't want." So I just threw him a bunch of stuff. Yeah, from yeah. from my personal experience, and from what I've heard from others and seen from others, the I wouldn't even go for the weapon set from the Terran, not from the Terran, the Temporal. Yeah, I have all three pieces for the weapon set. I just not running the um, torpedo right now because. I um I find I have a problem getting my uh torp uh right and uh I also find that the um, uh, I'm not I don't, I don't I don't like that uh um heavy torpedo that it fires. Yeah, understandable. It gets destroyed way too easily. Yeah. I mean I wouldn't have a problem with the sped, but Yes, but you don't have the room to run a spread, unfortunately. Right. Now, it is important to note here that we're not saying that he needs to get rid of the Chronoton because it's a different flavor, because Chronoton is an anti-proton base. So it is being boosted by the anti-proton consoles. So we're not terribly worried about that. But we would like to see more consistency with the mods. Right? Well, considering that I don't craft, yeah. Ever. <laughs> he I has me craft, and I ask him, "Do you care what the mods are?" In this case, he said no. <laughs> so and, he and, got the first. And, and my wife gets all of my crafting yep. materials. So. Yep. All right, and then so, what are we thinking for the deflector impulse, and shield, and all that stuff? I'm thinking if he wants to boost CPG, maybe the Solonade Deflector? That is what I was immediately thinking, was the Solonade yeah. Deflector and get Defector. Deflector and get that up to Ultra Rare for the extra part gen. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a, I've been looking at those, and there's a couple of ways that he can go. Um, <clears throat> there's potentially, as you say, the Solonade Deflector, but are you going to use that with the... Iconian three piece to, to get the flat bonus thinking. for his energy damage. That's what I, that's was, what thinking. I was thinking. Yeah. 
But then there's also the argument to lose the 50 part gen from the deflect that you get at ultra rare, make that up in the science consoles, and then go three piece Iconium but drop in the obelisk war to allow your ox to go to 135. Massive boost to your uh, part gen point. abilities. I'm that getting some really point. good figures using that. If you said it right, that warp core can sit at 135 ox resting. Hmm, the Terran warp core. You make an excellent point there. He does. Yeah, and he's also got the leech on there, so he doesn't need to have it at the full maxed out. The leech can make up that drink, and he's got the yeah, light consoles. Mm -hmm. so That's why I'm thinking then... maybe. I'm thinking, thinking maybe Iconium. switch to the restorative brain EPG um, on the science. What about? What about? Because we're sitting here thinking about powers and energy level and damage. Why not the obelisk core and the three set Terran for the rest? Because that has a load oh, of that's interesting. Well, that's um, a nice I idea. I was thinking actually the Terran uh, deflector for uh, if I was going to go drain. Yeah, because I mean the Terran set in general has a lot of good draining assistance. Okay. I mean my my okay my it scimitar does, yeah. just an example. I'm sitting there with a drain build on my scimitar. I need to get polar on weapons, but I'm sitting there at 430 drain X. I never have to worry about my power. I'm always at 125 everything. Good point as well. Yeah, and I don't I don't use the Iconian force set anymore. I use the Terran force set, and yet I'm still okay. getting you know 140k. But the other thing as well is I mean with, with the amount of beams that is actually running with the, the the firing cycle of each beams, each shot going out doing the drain from the leech, the amount of power flow back is still quite sufficient anyway. So mm -hmm. it's probably going to be a very close match with and without it. Very true. And, so and I, thinking... I, I would admit that that damage bonus from the Ico three piece is nice, though. It, it is. is nice. I can't deny that. And I also rate the Ico shields over the others as well. I have well, to agree. In my personal opinion, the Ico shields are the best. Mm. Well, any uh, any more rep gear, regardless of what it is, is going to have to wait until I get. Uh, tier 5 on my template. So yeah, here's what I'm thinking. How about we compromise here and do the Terran Deflector and then we can go 3-piece Ico. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, give it a try. At least give it a try because we know the Ico's tried and true. The Terran Deflector is going to give him not only a little Control X but also some Drain. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and if he does need to change to um, the obelisk core, then I mean, it's just it's just running the mission. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's just easy to change it over. It's not difficult. All righty, getting that in. Okay, and then we want to pick. There we go. Loading item. Okay, and shield. And of course, this is an end version of what we're wanting to see. So I realize we're putting it in an epic, but she's not going to get it out of out of the thing at. Major. There we go. As we're sitting here, I just checked the status of my Iconian Warp Core. Uh -huh. Mark 14 Ultra Rare, 96% chance to go to Epic. Oh, jeez. That thing is not being... I'm just giving up at this point. It's not being it's, nice, is it? You have to go and do it until you get to 100%. Okay. Listen, I have put beams at 100% chance to and they have gone and procced, but they didn't proc the next... Rarity. They just went back really? to one percent. Are you serious? What? 
Yeah, yeah, that's happened. I to call me. shenanigans. And they said, "Well, that's not supposed to happen." I call but shenanigans. So fair warning. Okay. All right. So yeah, we're fine with the M6 computer that gives some firing cycle haste. That gives some other nice stuff for DPS. We're fine with the timeline stabilizer. Same thing. Firing cycle haste. Some other nice stuff. And the tactical system stabilizer. Again, firing cycle haste and other stuff, so you can actually chain these three and keep your firing cycle a bit faster pretty much all the time. I do have one question. Would you guys suggest me changing out the uh, ancient omnidirectional for a uh, regular omnidirectional? Since you're not going to be using the, the uh, Dyson or core, I would say yes. I mean the and obviously make sure you're getting ancient works on this better. Yeah. In the ancient core. Because at least with the regular omnidirectional core, you can choose what mod you get. With the exception of the arc, mm -hmm. of course. So. Whereas with the ancient omni, they're set. All right. So we're liking the temporal abilities that he currently has may want to consider see I don't know if you wanted a bit more survivability I could see maybe taking out um, entropic redistribution two, moving that down to one and putting in maybe an ox to sif it's a nice quick heal has a quick um, has a quick recharge time and uh, all that, so it's a nice little thing to add survivability if you still needed it, or if you found that you needed it, with the removal of those two consoles. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right, shall we move on to the skill tree? Um, can we pick up on the traits <laughs> okay. for a second, just to show what sure. traits we're using in conjunction with the build? Awesome. Um. Because one of the things, and I've spoken to you out of, um, actually in, in other team speaks, and I've spoken to a few other people in game. Mm -hmm. um, Poe, would you have access to, or are you planning on getting this tune emergency weapon cycle? He has it. It's listed there. Didn't I uh, It's list listed it as one of the skills? It's the third one for Starship Traits. I, I didn't see it on the traits when I looked through. It came up. Yeah, I have Emergency things. Weapon Cycle as one of the traits, Starship Traits that I have listed. Cool, because one, one of the things the I just one. want to mention, um, yeah, one of the things I just want to mention is something we've talked about in, in other team speaks is um, a lot of people understand that there's firing cycles where um, you're being fired so many times a second and other people have explained about EPS and power flowing out and power flowing in. Um, what you've got to take in consideration when you're using haste, you're going out a sequence with the f power flow back into the system and sometimes those hasted shots can fire with less power if you're not using brain resistance on your energy weapons. So things like greedy emitters and emergency weapon cycle and sometimes the, the drain resistance when using Marion Francis Dolmar and um, registered energy modulation. So, but but Poe's quite covered on that because he's got the right traits for it. Yes, he does. Although, yeah. I will notice he does have emergency weapon cycle, but if we go and look back at his bridge officer abilities, he doesn't have... He has have... no emergency power to weapons. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that means emergency weapon cycle is currently wasted. So yep. what you could do is maybe take out channel deconstruction and put in, in order to proc that emergency weapon cycle, you're going to have to do two things. You're going to have to put in emergency power to weapons one instead of channel deconstruction. On my parses, I could never get that thing up over like 300 DPS. No matter how many times I fired it, no matter what combination I used, you know, I couldn't get it up over 300. Um, you know, kind of thing, no matter what I did with it. So we put emergency weapon cycle in, now it's going to be only half the time, up only 50% of the time, because we only have one copy. So what we do there 
is we deal with that with bridge officers. So I would say instead of having the con officer, con officer. to reduce the recharge time and evasive maneuvers, take those two out and maybe even take out the shield distribution officer because you're going to need three of the, was it damage control engineers, I want to say? Yeah, but what yeah. we can do there, um, we can drop that down to possibly one, maybe two damage control engineers. Okay. And replace the engineering temporal operative officer that's in the bridge officer mm. with a Krenum engineer and cross train him in temporal. Oh, yes. And that way okay. then he gives a call down to all engineering abilities. Yes, I see what you're saying. Okay. So that, that then is, frees okay. up that, that DOF space. So he can retain okay. one of those shield distribution if he needs it. Where do you get the Krenum at? Um, that would you be... can pick the Krenum up from your research lab. Yep, at the research lab. So the ones yeah, we're can, talking about... They can about, be a little bit expensive, but... They can be. In fact, I'm going to transwarp to our research lab and show them what we're talking about. Yay for being in game. <laughs> While doing this. This is why I kept the game up, folks. Alright, so we're talking about the Krenum Bridge Officers, which are at your research lab. I'm going to have to remember exactly where they are. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where Kirby spends the rest of the show running around the research lab and entering the conference room five times. Yes. Well, see, Ed just told me it's not in the conference room. It's in development. <laughs> if I remember rightly, it's in development. Might be in research. All I know is so. it's never where I go first time. I know, right? <laughs> it's never where you go first time. Hey, 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 I see something looks like... Are those... No, duty officer assignments. Damn it! Okay. It's probably not where I go. It's kit frames. Okay. I don't think it's here. Science console store, daily research and development missions, that's not it. Dang it! Well, you're right, it's never where I go the first time. <laughs> okay. So it's not in development, folks. <laughs> okay. Wow, Kirby. I know, right? It's been a while. Okay, it's not in the conference room. So don't go in there. I would okay. say this will be taken out in editing, but we're not editing. <laughs> we're not <laughs> editing. See, I could say we're just where recording. It is, but okay. I feel like making her run for it. You're in research. It's in research somewhere. <laughs> now I gotta find it. <laughs> I know exactly where it is, but like I said, I feel like uh, okay, I see it, Taylor. It has been a while <laughs> since I've had to look for these. Kit module store. Secondary deflector store. That was not what I wanted. Duty officer store? No. Hey, maybe it's this guy that has the three, like, skill things? God fun it, my mouse is acting weird. Bridge officer vendor! There we go. Okay, so as you see, I do not have enough fleet credits or dilithium. Well, I have enough dilithium, but not enough fleet credits. Not enough. Because they cost 160,000 fleet credits. Okay, but if you mouse over them, so if you right click, okay, so it grants you a single. Krenum Bridge Officer Candidate, while his or her traits and Bridge Officer abilities will largely be randomized, blah, blah, blah. All Krenum Officer trained in a few specific techniques that will benefit your crew. Okay, so one of them is Flux. This is a passive trait, plus 20% recharge speed for all non-weapon abilities. Self only. Okay. And...
passive engineering officers only plus 10% recharge speed for all engineering bridge officer oh, abilities shit. can stack three times. All right. So that basically says that it will reduce the recharge of all your abilities and reduce it a little further for the class specific one. Okay. So this is what we're talking about when we talk about Krenum Bridge Officers. So that will help to reduce the cooldown. We'll get it down to where we only need one of the damage control engineers and we can use this as a secondary option. option. And right. if, we, if we actually use two of those officers. Yep, we use two of them and it'll... You get the two yep. stacks. So you can get one male, expensive. one female, but it is expensive, yeah. And we'll say this is going to be what 180,000 fleet marks. I mean, we're 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 a a beta fleet, so we get the six yeah. percent reduction either side. And thirty, this is what 34,000 dilithium. So yeah. if you're in an alpha fleet, that'll cost you slightly more, and if you're in a gamma, it'll cost you slightly less. Yeah. But about 160,000 credits and 34,000 dilithium. Quite a yeah, bit. I couldn't read that, but I didn't have my glasses on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's okay. So with that, we can get that down to, I'm thinking, two just to be safe. Yes. Yeah, two damage control engineers with the cooldown and very rare. And then we'll have the one officer for... That was a con officer for cooling down um, the evasive maneuver. All right. So we can do that. And then we'll leave the other two because that the deflector officer reduces the recharge for deflector abilities. Gravimetric scientist can create an aftershock gravity well. Both are very good when we want that gravity well. So that's awesome. All right. So good thing we went over the traits because uh, I didn't even <laughs> make that connection. <laughs> Don't be halfway through talking about it. Hey, we all missed it. So we all missed it. I didn't want to write it towards okay. it. <laughs> uh huh. All right. So yeah, we have. After the fact. So Poe has for his Starship Tate's regroup, so attack patterns, reduce the recharge time of engineering and temporal operative bridge officer abilities. So that's actually a good thing that'll help to recharge that emergency power to weapons as well. All hands on deck, which of course reduces science and captain abilities. Emergency weapon cycle, we already went over what that does, and reciprocity, which cools down tactical abilities. Nice. We, we could also apply the. Go ahead. We can apply the same with the science officers here as well. We can switch them for Krenims. I know it makes it an expensive route in fleet marks and dilithium, but it's one of those things that you can work towards over time. Yeah. Alrighty, and then we have pretty normal set of personal traits. The one that's empty, he said, was um, what was it? The the one you get from the agent of yesterday that I can't remember the name of. Hey, wake up. I know the one you're thinking of. Yeah, I'm going to pull it up Advanced right. Advanced Rapid Support. I'm actually thinking about getting rid of it because I can never remember to use that um, Yeah. The t engineering fleet. I never remember to use it. Yeah. That cools down your fleet specific or your profession specific fleet ability there. But I mean, pretty normal stuff. Warp theorist for the the extra um, EPG there and uh, innocuous. Was that innocuous? No, operative. Sorry, for the crit chance. That's innocuous. 
uh, beam training, point blank shot. Yep. So point blank shot for when you're close. Astrophysicist for the part gens and flow caps. Uh, accurate and grace under fire to reduce the cooldown of the what you call it, of a ah, goodness gracious miracle work. Thank you. Um. One of the things that I, I have noticed is when you actually look, um, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad, but the astrophysicist trait uh, gives you plus 10 to EPG, plus 10 to drain, and plus 10 to uh, perception. When you actually equate what plus 10 actually does to that skill, it is so minute, it's almost to the point of if there is something that will enhance your damage or your crit further, always go for it over the astrophysicist. Mm. Well, we could take it out and possibly put in something like bulkhead technician for a bit of extra survivability. That gives 10% yep. to your hull, which is going to be overall, I think, a better, um, a better buff there. Yeah. For him, since we did take away a little bit of his survivability. And that's a free trait that everybody gets. So it's not going to cost them anything extra to get it. And it's, like we said, 10% of your haul. So that's an awesome one. Uh, the other one that is really, really good is going back to the space reputation if you are finding survivability a problem. Mm -hmm. And you do have that fifth trait slot is the energy refrequencer from the, uh, I believe it's the Iconium. The Iconium. Iconium and too. the yeah. amount of hill that that can give you is is, is phenomenal. Um, I, I I run it on all my side beam builds. It's mm -hmm. and I, I do notice when I'm not running it, survivability does drop by about uh, quite a bit actually. Can't give you an exact figure, but it is a, a big drop. Yeah, it is. I can I see it too. Now I am thinking. I'm wondering if the the enhanced shield penetration. If you might do better with um, precision in there instead, which gives pl plus four critical chance. Um, I would I would actually favor enhanced armor pen over enhanced shield pen. He already has enhanced armor pen. Yeah, um, that's why I I'll drop it out and I'll probably go for the other trait. The precision. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do as well. Precision! No qualms there. Okay. Where is it? There we go. Alright. The, the other thing as well is we've got to remember that, that he is actually sitting to the side ultimate, so he does have mm -hmm. probability manipulation available to him. So that, he does. that's going to be a lock in his crit of 50% uh, for yes. a good portion of time. But yeah. anything he can do to boost the crit outside of that is going to be beneficial. I don't know if this yep. has been covered, but on top of that, what specializations are you going to choose? We haven't got to the skills yet. It, it, <laughs> on there. Yeah. It's so not it showing up on for there, me. Yeah. Go with it. Specialization. Have, uh, temporal and strategist. My secondary and temporal is my primary. Yeah, okay. temporal and strategist. Strategist is completed and temporal is almost completed. I have all of space okay. and most of the ground. Okay. So looking at the skill tree, I know Ed and I were talking about this earlier. You really yeah. don't need the points in accuracy. Like at all. I would change the drain infection because you're not doing any active drains. They're all passive. I would change the drain infection over to control amplification. So you're not losing any points there, but I would take out the accuracy. I would also take out your two points that you have in tactical readiness. For one thing, tactical readiness right now is bugged. And I would take out the two points that you have in the shield pen, the shield weakening. Because shields tend to go down so quickly that you don't really notice it anyway. I would put six points in, or three points each, in the um, in the uh, crit chance and crit severity, 
at the commander level and then I'd put the last point in the hull pen and you'll find that that'll really uh, put things up and then you can leave it like that or if you wanted to go really on the wild side if you find that you're still seeing a lot of survivability you could even take out your two points at the lieutenant engineering your hull, pen, hull capacity and hull region and put those into science readiness if you wanted to if you find that you are tanky enough but that would be like Walk on the wild side. Walk on the wild. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there will be the occasional, yeah. as, as we say, brown trouser moment. <laughs> yeah. As you sit and watch your hull at 1% thinking, am I going to die? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There will be the brown trouser oh, moment. Oh, that's, the, that's the, the, one of the reasons I went with um, the temporal thing is because that tier 4 ability is get it maxed out is your get out of jail free card yeah it is he's talking about continuity uh, yep and i have Something been in like many of them i was doing uh i was doing the badlands doing the fighting the terrans and they'd one hit me and i teleport away half health heal myself real fast and just keep going mm -hmm. yeah. I was about to say, continuity, something that doesn't, ra that very rarely stays true in Star Trek. <laughs> this is true. All right, so, and that's what I do. I'd take the points out of accuracy, um, take off the, uh, yeah, two points in temporal readiness. We really didn't need it. And then put six points, three points each in the crit D and crit H. Skill and then the last one in hull pen. One one thing I will say mm -hmm. though is anybody that is watching has got a similar build and is is is, is going to possibly emulate what we're doing with uh, post build here. If you're not fully uh, specced up on the temporal specialization and you're not using threatening stance, don't put in the temporal operative uh, specialization until you've got all the relevant traits to negate the damage drop-off, and the teleport. Right. Otherwise, so you're, you're going to be detrimenting your build when, when that kicks and in. And I'll, I'll actually go in game to show this. Okay. So yeah, that'd be good if, if you show us yep. a link. So the uh, temporal operative... Okay, you were saying... Hold on. You were saying not do the tackle readiness? No, no, yeah. you're, 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 you're fine. You're fine, hold on. Oh, oh sorry. Okay, we'll, we'll come to so time. continuity, you'll notice... It does say that it gives, at the very bottom, um, an adjustment period debuff, minus 80% all damage for 20 seconds, and minus 66.7% flight speed for 20 seconds. So once you're teleported, or once continuity takes an effect, it gives you a huge damage debuff and huge turn debuff. So what Temporal Adaptation 1, here on the right-hand side, does is it decreases that to 10 seconds. Temporal Adaptation 2, the bottom one on the right hand side, negates that completely. So what Ed here is saying is if you're going to go with Temporal Operative as your primary, do not claim the continuity until you have three spec points to fill in continuity, Temporal Adaptation 1, and Temporal Adaptation 2. And that way you don't have to worry about a damage debuff and turn rate debuff, flight speed and turn rate debuff. Okay. I mean, okay. obviously, I mean, if you are using farming methods to actually pick those points up, then it might not be an issue. Right. Okay, now, what were you going to say, Poe? I was just asking if you said that uh, tactical readiness was the... One that I didn't need. Yes. And well, yeah, as we said, it's, it's, it's not really working at the moment. Yeah. And don't worry, we'll send you the link to the changes we've made. Because we are making the changes as That's we go. That's one of the things we're... 
We'll do that for everybody. Everybody that, that, yes. that requests help on a build, they will be provided with a link. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think we're just about done. Yeah. Anything we can think of changing? Anything else? We have focused on space. I think we're good. He's, he hasn't got ground in there, but my recommendation yeah. for ground is, is the same as anything. Top left, bottom right, carry a hypo. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> literally, I've, I've done that on all of my characters, and yeah, all right, I did die on Defira with you yesterday on my yeah. really low yeah. level tomb that didn't have much decent weaponry. Yep. But you you take a, a decently geared up tune over there with, even with base, I mean, I'm, I'm running... Still running the Mako set at Mark 12, and yeah, still have no problem running in doing all the old elites and bug hunts. If I'm in a bug hunt, I will use the, um, I can't remember which um, base it is now, but the one with the big toxic resist. Uh, I'll throw that on. And Counter Command, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing with being ground is, is I, I, unless you're doing PvP, it's a, it's a very easy kettle of fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It's it's easier than a lot of people think. But yeah, top left, bottom yeah, right, really... as you can see, and carry a hypo. And just remember to switch the traits so there's the specializations over as well to com uh, commando. Yeah. And yeah, whichever one you want to back it up. Yep. All right, so I think we are done. This has been the first episode of Utopia Planitia. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Poe, for letting us, for, for being our first victim. I mean, volunteer. Okay. No <laughs> problem. He's going to spend the next 20 minutes link. in the recovery room coming round. <laughs> yeah, he is going <laughs> to go to work. All right, so you see I'm saving it now. And there's the link. I'll be passing that on to him. One of the things that we we um, that I I would like to see um, if if people are sending in their builds, if they wouldn't, you know, if if they can, maybe probably run a pass so we can see what you are doing in a, in a match. Um, so as we've we've got a level as to to what you are, and then we can see afterwards whether or not there has been any improvement with our suggestions. It'd be good to get some feedback yeah, on definitely. these. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, and if you want to, if you want to send us a build, you can either you can. Send it to me at Teacher Kirby in game, or to Ain if you want to give them your at handle Ain if you want to. Ain at USS Freelancer. Or to or Ed. myself. Good. And I am at Krildan, spelled K R I L L D A R N. Okay, and we will let you know if we've chosen your build. And uh, when we're going to do that recording. All right. So this has been the first episode of Utopia Planitia. We'll see you for our next one with our new victim. I mean, volunteer. Good night. New hamster. Bye. Happy hunting. <laughs>